changing the Corolla. Does the new generation of the car keep up with the competition? A ride and drive next. Welcome back on this Wednesday. In the compact segment, the Toyota Corolla was the U.S. sales leader for nine straight years before being dethroned by the Honda Civic in 2012. Automotive News West Coast editor Mark Recton recently drove the redesigned Corolla to see if it has what it takes to reclaim the crown. Toyota's been selling the Corolla in America for 45 years, winning tons of awards for its quality, durability, and reliability. But it's also been on top of lists such as most boring styling, most likely to clog the fast lane, and also most likely to be driven by somebody who has no hope of career ambition. But for 2014, Toyota's given the Corolla an extreme makeover. Okay, let's be honest here. The Corolla isn't going to win any best looking contests compared to the Mazda 3 or the Ford Focus or the Hyundai Kia Twins. But really, as far as Toyota is concerned, their designers were chugging a whole lot of Red Bull when they designed this front fascia. Toyota national brand manager Doug Coleman explains why, after years of ubiquity, the Corolla is ready to be embraced by the cool kids. Yeah, well, certainly the younger buyer is a very elusive target for the automotive industry and everybody wants them in their showrooms. But when we showed younger buyers this brand new Corolla and they saw this bold, dynamic exterior, they got inside and saw the premium soft touch materials and then saw all the great features that we're going to offer them, they turned to us and said, this isn't just a car that we feel like we should buy, it's a car we really want to buy. Mechanically, the base 1.8-liter four-banger is a carryover engine. However, Toyota also is offering a more powerful echo version of the same engine that boosts highway fuel economy to a claimed 42 miles per gallon. However, a supply chain snag means only 10% of Corollas will be available with the better engine. The big powertrain news is the installation of a continuously variable transmission over most of the model line. Built by Aishin, this pulley-style CVT comes with artificial shift points that give the impression of a typical geared transmission. These shift points account for vehicle speed, engine RPM, braking force, cornering yaw angle, and throttle position. By my driving impressions, there is much less hunting and rubber band feel to this CVT than most of the competition. Dimensionally, the Corolla gains 4 inches in wheelbase and overall length, with a longer wheelbase than a 1996-2001 to 2001 Camry. That added wheelbase goes mostly into the back seat. A 6-footer has decent legroom in the back, although the headroom is a bit tight. As for layout, in an era of gentle swoops and curves of interior design, the instrument panel is oddly vertical and blocky. It makes you wonder, is it retro or just cheap? On the downside, the Corolla still has an antiquated torsion beam rear suspension, which was new when Conestogo wagons traveled the prairies. And most of the lineup suffers from rear drum brakes as well. That's pretty prehistoric stuff compared to the competition. But with a price tag of $17,610, including destination, Toyota has an aggressive starting price point. Toyota let the current Corolla and the one before this run for six model years, whereas most of the competition run theirs for five. Toyota won't say how long the new Corolla will run for, but they do want sales to increase to about 330,000 units a year. That should be enough for it to regain the compact segment volume title. For Automotive News TV, I'm Mark Rechton. Thanks, Mark. Volkswagen says it will not grant immediate union recognition to its U.S. workers it may take months to reach an agreement on a German-style works council for its Tennessee plant. VW telling Chattanooga staffers earlier this month it was in talks with the UAW on representation. The union announcing last week it had collected signed cards from a majority of the plant's 2,500 workers backing recognition. Organizing foreign-owned U.S. plants is a top priority for the UAW, and VW's German union, IG Metall, is pushing the automaker to set up a works council in the U.S. EV charging station maker Ecotality has filed for bankruptcy protection and plans to auction its assets next month. Four years ago, the company won a $100 million grant from the feds. The money was earmarked to create a network of charging stations for cars like the Nissan Leaf. The company says Nissan has agreed to provide more than $1 million of financing to keep Ecotality running during the bankruptcy. Back to VW for a second, and you're looking at a time machine of sorts. It's the production XL1. VW says this plug-in hybrid foreshadows the company's future. He's discovering the Volkswagen XL1, the model that redefines what's possible in car making.
That's daredevil Felix Baumgartner taking it for a spin. The XL1 has a carbon fiber and aluminum body. Mileage, 261 MPG. Among the unconventional features, staggered front seats and rear view cameras instead of mirrors. Mark Trehan, VW's executive VP of Group Quality, says the car isn't headed for the U.S., but some features are. A lot of the features that you see in this car, a lot of the thinking that you see in this car, will be applied in various forms in future models, you can be sure. Trahan addressing the Automotive Press Association in Detroit. We'll hear more from him on later newscasts, including his views on giving diesels a bigger foothold in the U.S. With that, we thank you for watching, and we'll see you back here tomorrow.